Okay, so um, only thing I have planned for kneading today is just make sure you have something to sit on. We'll be coming to a couple of seated positions regularly, so that will be useful. Um, this is Jezebel. Uh, she doesn't know what's going on in the world yet, so if she decides that napping is no longer how she would like to experience yoga and she needs to go back in her crate, excuse that and thank you for bearing with our adjustment to life together. Um, Jezebel was adopted on Tuesday and she went missing on Wednesday morning and came back on Friday morning. And so I spent about 48 hours, well, she spent about 48 hours in absolute terror. And oddly enough, I spent about 48 hours in as much peace as I have been in in months. And I, it was like an instinctual need to find that peace because I've had dogs most of my life. I understand like a lot of where like animal psychology goes into. It's like if I start freaking out and I go looking for her, she's going to freak out and bolt again. So I can't bring that kind of energy into trying to find the baby girl because her life depends on it. And knowing that made that really easy to accommodate just to say like, oh, her life depends on it. So I have to stay calm. Okay, great. I'm calm. And then I was in the shower today and I was thinking about it. It's like, oh, I wonder how this will go. Like now that, that her life doesn't depend on me being calm, am I going to be able to keep this calm feeling going? And then I realized that my life depends on it. Our lives depend on our ability to find, to come back to, to rekindle peace and contentment. Maybe not as literally or as life and death kind of way as you know, making sure that Jazz doesn't get run over in her continuous running away, but the quality of our life depends on this. Now I can make it till I'm 85, but if I spend till 85, like, I don't want to make, <laughs> I don't want 85 years of this. <laughs> I would like 85 years of, <sighs> but I'll take whatever I can get of, <sighs> back to that, that mantra that I love from Lama Marut, Om, it's this way now. And it's like the Tara Brock suggestion that we do a yes meditation, which is to meditate and then every time something comes up that keeps us from being perfectly focused on our breath, whatever that is, we just say, ah, yes, this too. And we let it pass. You don't have to even push it past. It's probably going to pass and something else is going to come up, which I think is like the lesson of this year. Every time you think you've got it under wraps, something else is going to come up. But our life depends on the capacity to cultivate, to seek, to hold, not to grasp, but to hold peace and contentment. So we'll take kind of a long breath period as we begin here. And I want to invite you to acknowledge anything that comes up. Say, ah, yes, okay. I guess this is what I'm thinking about now. And then start to come back to the breath as it seems reasonable to you, but you don't have to throw things away, push things away, or frantically go like, oh shit, I'm thinking. Like, I have to stop doing that. It's like, oh, I'm thinking and let it move on. Yeah. Well, if you'd like to rest with your palms facing up, just kind of being open that you may receive things and you don't have to grasp them. And you don't have to push them away. You can just hold it and both of you can move on from that. 
If it's comfortable to you, close your eyes. If that's not so comfortable, you're not alone in that. So maybe just find something soft and easy to relax your gaze towards. Notice your breath. Start to cultivate the peaceful steadiness that the quality of your life depends on. And just breathing in a steady, fluid manner. By the way, your life is not crummy. <laughs> you cannot always be peaceful and content. I'd have about 33 years of <laughs> varying levels of crumminess behind me <laughs> but we're working on it yeah find a foundation and the continuous flow of inhale and exhale think of your grounding to this earth to your seat to whatever you are seated upon. Notice at this point if any thoughts have come up that have derailed you from the breath, derailed you from this space. So, okay, well, that too. If there are any points of tension in your body, feel free to make an adjustment to let it go settle back in the breath. And the next time you take a big breath in through your nose, big breath out through your mouth. Again, like that. For three ohms or growls, whatever. Uh, Start to uncross your legs. You might, with your eyes open, bring the soles of your feet towards each other, your knees open. Let your feet be fairly far away from you. And start to roll around on your hips a little bit. And then roll around in the other direction, just shifting from side to side. And 
cross your legs and then whatever way you just cross them naturally cross them the other way and take your hands behind you the belly lift up the heart lift up the shoulders roll back take a big breath in soften as you exhale and again like that inhale Feel the front body open up, soften as you exhale. One more time, big breath in. Exhale, soften, and then take your hands in front of you and come forward into a place where you are soft and find the breath to be easy. So for some of us, it might just be hands a couple of inches in front of us. For some of us, you might come down onto your elbows you are hopefully seated up on a cushion, a pillow. This might make this a little bit easier on you. If it doesn't, back it up. Take three more deep breaths. Really let go with that exhale. And then walk your hands back and cross your legs the normal way, whatever normal is, just the one that you're, you instinctually go towards. Walk your hands out a little bit, just kind of feel into like, what does it feel like to fold forward now in a place in which I'm a little bit more comfortable after challenging myself even just a tiny bit. And then start to walk your hands back. Take your right hand over to the right side and take your left arm up and over your nose. You're gonna leave it just a little bit more in front of your ear, really settle that left hip down and then look down towards your right shoulder. And you'll stay in that position. It's just your arm that moves over and let your palm face in front of you. So you're stretching the front of your chest. Take another breath in and out and turn the palm to face back behind you. You might have a different stretch to the front of your shoulder. Maybe you can even press your hand back a little bit more. Breathing in, breathing out. And start to lift yourself back up. Now take your left hand out and you want to use this hand for support. Don't just slide down towards it. Take your right arm up and over. Settle your shoulder blade forward gently. You can also think of your low ribs kind of dropping in to make sure you're stretching the back and the side. And then start looking down towards your left hand. Notice that there is tension on the inside of the shoulder. Give it permission to take a hike. Big breath in, big breath out. And then the arm goes down by your side. And you reach outwards gently through those fingertips and turn your palm to face forward. Notice what happens in the space in your collarbone and the front of your shoulder. Changing that sensation slightly by turning the palm, the face behind you, maybe pressing that palm back behind you a little bit more. Soften as you exhale. And start to come on up, coming back to the center. Pull your shoulders back a few times, forward a few times. And then your cushion that's underneath you, go ahead and take it and set it off to the side. We're gonna be down with our hips on the floor for a bit. You're gonna make a, a pinwheel shape with your legs. So take one shin and make it parallel with the short end of your mat and the other shin is lined up with the long end of your mat so my foot isn't close in by me. And then start walking your hands back. Just come back to some place that's real easy for you, like no big deal whatsoever. So then we can put a little bit more toning and action into this. So a lot of times you just kind of like lay back. You can be a little bit more active about this. So you're gonna let your hip lift up. So if you're mirroring me, that would be your left hip that lifts up. 
and then you're gonna roll your shoulders back and lift your heart up and then feel your belly pulling back away from your hip bone or your hip bone pulling up and lifting your belly button up. Take it a little bit more front of the thigh opening. And then with this action, with this heart open, with this hip bone and belly button lifted, can you still let your throat and your breath be soft? One more round of breath. Big exhale. And then take your left hand over, walk yourself over your right thigh and then slide your left leg back enough that it's easier to come forward. Sometimes if you have it in close, you're kind of just hunched in. You wanna feel a slightly longer spine coming over the thigh and the shin area. And today, go ahead and pick whatever seems best for you. Give yourself a walk around until you find what best for you is right now. And take another three slow breaths. Big exhale. And I know it's fairly early, but we're gonna go into pigeon pose. So take your right shin back a little bit and you're gonna lift yourself up so that you have both hips in line facing towards the floor. Now, if this feels tender to you, if it feels not right, you can always lay on your back. You could also take your pillow and kind of slide it up underneath your right hip. And you don't wanna take the left hip too far forward just resting them somewhat evenly in space and stay up on your fingertips here. Feel your right thigh bone rest back. And then the hip bones and the belly button lift. So we have a little bit of toning here. And just kind of explore in your consciousness and your body, like what's the difference between toning and strong and like way overdoing it. Like you're looking for something that's missing, you're talking about something that's missing, you have action that you're going towards to accomplishing your goals, that's still important. We don't get super worked up about it if we can help it. Present, alert, active. Big breath in. Big breath out. And start to walk. And hands back in, you're gonna move. If you've got a pillow or anything underneath your hip, go ahead and move it. Come down onto your seat, bring the soles of both feet together, and then go ahead and roll around your hips. roll around in the other direction. And then you'll start to set up in that sort of like pinwheel shape on the other side. And you're sitting on your left hip, the left shin is parallel and the right shin is parallel with the other side of the mat. So take your hands back until it's like kind of easy. Like, oh, I don't feel much here. Can you make yourself feel things by being present and active? So you're gonna take your hip and lift it up with the knee down, and your heart lifts up, and then you're gonna tone in that low belly. Yeah, and you know, I know it's really dark in here. I don't even know why that is, because I've got all the lights on and it's sunny. But you can still see that shift up in the front of the hip, right? And the belly draws in. And it's not like crunches, it's just, oh active here and then you're breathing in this space as well breathing in breathing out and then take your right hand over walk yourself up towards your shin and then you're going to take your 
right leg and drop it back a little bit. So there's a little bit more room to come out over your shin. And if you're more over your thigh today, that's fine. We're using this as a bit of a warm up entrance to be in swan before we come to pigeon. Because swan is generally a much, um, I don't know if it's less intense, but it's definitely a little bit more passive because you're kind of just laying on your legs. More yin, less direct action necessary. Breathing in, breathing out. One more round of breath. And then starting to come in so that you can shift. So pretty much nobody is able to have a shin parallel to the front end of the mat in pigeon. So draw the foot back. And then start to tilt up so that you have the hips even in space so you're not leaning into one side or the other. You can grab that pillow and put it underneath your hip if that's helpful to you. It's not like you don't do the pose as well. It's just if that's helpful to you, do what's helpful. And then lift up, maybe on your fingertips, feeling the belly lift up, the heart lift up, the collarbones open. Big breath in, big breath out. One more time, see the change from the filling up with the inhale, to letting go with the exhale. And then you're just gonna lift yourself up, slide that left leg back and come down to laying on your belly for a moment. Make a pillow for your head with your hands, rest a forehead or a cheek. Apparently it's still summer, so if you need this as a cooling pose, if you need to cool your breath down using that frosted Cheerio, tiny O of your lips, remember you can do that at any time. Even if there is not a yoga class going on, heck, do it when you're just like, I don't know, out amongst people and like, I don't know, I just need to be grounded, need to cool off. Be the change we wish to see in the world, right? You take care of yourself when you need it. One more breath in this position at least, exhale. And then bring yourself up onto your elbows, put your in sphinx pose, getting a little bit of a back bend, and then feel your belly button this time lifting up towards your heart and your collarbones opening out away from your heart and then soften your jaw muscles, your throat when you get there to let this front space open more. Big breath in, exhale, soften it. Bring your hands in underneath your shoulders. Actually, a little bit back behind your shoulders. We're gonna go into Cobra Pose, another back bend. So you're gonna lift your heart up and forward. Open your collarbones away from your heart. Draw your elbows back, reach the toes back. Send the ears up off of your shoulders so you're not you know, bit by a Cobra Pose. You're traveling like a strong, open Cobra, breathing in. And exhale, softening down. This time, bring your hands a little bit further forward. So now they're under your shoulders. And we're gonna come up for like the softest, most relaxed up dog you've done probably in a while or ever. And you're gonna come up, so you're gonna leave your thighs down. And I'm in more of like a ramp than a back bend. You're just gonna lift your belly button up to your heart and open your collarbones. And then pull your hips back towards child's pose. So not like quite child's pose. And then probably because it'll feel nice, 
Just kind of sway your hips a little bit side to side. Take a breath in, on a breath out, and then inhale, lift yourself up, shoulders above your wrists, let your hips go forward and soften your hips down, and then lift your belly button up to your heart, collarbones are open, chest lifts up, exhale, pull it back towards child's pose. Slowly inhale, lift it up, let your hips go forward, open your heart into that soft up dog. Exhale towards child's pose. One more time, inhale, upward facing dog, the really, really soft version. Exhale, all the way to real child's pose, toes towards each other's hips back. And I mean like your real child's pose, right? Like, so if we were just in your fullest child's pose, then it just means you were already working in that range of motion. That's great. You do not have to have your hips on your heels. Find where your lower back relaxes. Maybe shifting your hips gently side to side to find that. One more full round of breath. Big exhale. And then start to lift yourself up. And then you're gonna take one foot and bring it outside of that hand. So I'm gonna do the left side just so that, that way you can see me. It doesn't matter which one you do. Once you get there, you've got the foot outside of your hand, so my hands are on the inside of my legs, but you're going to take a little roll around in your hips. You can be on fingertips if that feels a little bit better on your wrist. It would be a great change to make to take good care of yourself. And then roll around in the other direction if you haven't already. If your knee is not happy about being on the ground, go ahead and put something squishy underneath it. Maybe there's that pillow or you fold the mat over. And when you feel like you've got about as many rounds in each direction as you've been into making, you're gonna come up onto your fingertips. Let your hips rest forward. Push that front foot down and lift your heart up. Can you lift the belly button up towards your heart? Widen your collarbones and soften the throat muscles in order to let your heart open up as much as it is able to right now. Take a breath in and a breath out. And then you're gonna turn your legs so that your knee and your toe face the same way on that front thigh. And then take the opposite hand a little bit further out and then the other hand goes on to the same thigh. Yeah. Then you're going to push down on that thigh, push down in that foot, and then let the other hip roll forward as the heart opens up. Beautiful. The all-in-one. We're stretching the front of a thigh, a back of a thigh. We've got a twist. We've got a heart opener, a hip opener, and an opportunity to practice the breath. Big breath in. Big breath out. Start to pull the hips back. You're gonna turn your toes to face forward in the front leg, bring it in a little bit more, so you're a little bit narrower, but not much. And then your hands come up onto your front thigh. So lean forward, push into the front thigh so you feel some coning underneath it. And then leave your opposite hand on the knee and open up into a twist. My left leg is forward, I'm twisting to the left. It doesn't matter which one you're doing. Can you relax your collarbone open on that extended arm? Soften your throat. Soften your belly. Feel this thigh bone pulling towards your back foot. Breathing in. Breathing out. 
And then turn to face forward. Take just one glorious inhale, lifting up. And then exhale, take the hands down, slide your hips and your front foot back. And then bring the other foot forward on the outside of your hands and start to make some shifts in the hips where you kind of stir around and open up that space. And stirring around in the other direction. And when you feel like you've been stirring the appropriate number of times, you're probably right. That's all good. Start to come forward a little bit more. You might even scoot your foot further forward because you might have found more space and we'll all be on fingertips. So you have a little bit more room to rest the pelvis forward, but lift the belly button and the heart up, spreading the collarbones apart, ears off of shoulders, breath is steady. Gaze is off in the distance. Maybe you can feel a little softness and lightness in your facial expression. And then I'll start to turn your knee and toe out on that front leg. Bring the opposite hand further forward and the same hand onto your thigh. And you push the hand into the thigh and then the foot into the floor to so the bottom of the thigh tone and you roll the shoulder back as the opposite hip comes forward. Stretching back of thigh, front of thigh, twisting, heart opening, and hip opening, all of the things. Can you still breathe here? One more round of breath. Exhaling. Turning forward, turning your toe and your knee forward, bringing them a little bit closer in, and then both hands go on to the front thigh. So you'll be more stable if you can push into this front foot. It really helps to ground us. Opposite hand onto the front knee, and then you open up into a twist over that leg. You have to keep wrapping your thigh bone towards the back foot, pushing down to the front foot, and softening your belly when you exhale. Try to relax that extended arm, the shoulder down away from your ear. Don't let the distance close in. Big breath in. Big breath out. And then come back to face to the front. Take one inhale to lift the arms up, stretch skyward. And then exhale, take the hands down. You're gonna slide your leg back. Press the palms down about short shoulders distance apart. Curl the toes under and downward facing dog. Oh, my calves need some walking out. You might notice the same. If you need to get off of your hands and maybe be in table or child's pose to wiggle the hips out, you can do that as well. Try to relax your ears away from your shoulders. Strong armpits, not just strong wrists. Strong armpit. Take one more full round of inhale and exhale. And then bring your feet towards your hands, your hands towards your feet. Soften into your fold. Bend your knees as much as you need here. Bring your hands wherever it feels better to you. Really let your tail feathers expand. You have your sits bones opening up a little bit more. One more breath. And start to lift yourself up. Coming up to standing. And then when you get there, start rolling around one of your feet on the mat. So you kind of work out the foot bones. And then roll in the other direction, which always feels very strange to me. Uh, I take the other foot. Just take a direction. Oh my goodness. Sometimes the balance, not so much. Other direction. A little bit of footwork. 
Bring your feet in underneath your hips, toes facing forward, hands at your heart. If it feels comfortable, close your eyes. If it's not so comfortable, then maybe just look down at the floor at a specific point, soft gaze. Feel the weight in your body. Notice where it is if you're lilting to one side or the other, forward or back, and then find yourself where you're putting the most weight into the ball of the foot and spreading out from the big toe edge to the pinky toe edge. And then lift your toes up. See if you can slowly rest all 10 toes back down. And as you lift slowly the 10 toes up, and slowly lower them down. Try to keep the timing even. It's not even on me either. Just let that be an awareness of how your toes are operating right now. Is the weight still in the ball of the feet and not in the heels? And one more round of breath. And the next time you settle the toes down, go ahead and open your eyes. We're gonna widen the feet out, about hand width apart, toes face forward. Take an inhale, lift it up, lengthen your spine. And then exhale, fold it in. You can hold your shins or you can hold onto the floor. Feel free to put a little bend into your knees to really let the back of the pelvis open up more and relax the ears down away from your shoulders. If you've got knee stuff going on, if you've got tension in your lower back, I want you to do this just around in your ribs where you get a little bit of a sway back and forth and side to side. If you're feeling a little strong, if you've done this sort of thing before, you might put a little bend into your knees as you go side to side. So you're really letting those hips open up. Resting your head down. If you bobble heading a little bit, shaking your head yes and no. And settle down for one full round of breath in this easy fold. Bringing your hands to your hips, lifting yourself all the way up. And then bring your heels in so that your toes face out, your legs are a little bit narrower, but not much. Just gonna sit down into this, this squat, this goddess squat, this Buddha squat, and then ourselves be open. Ground to the pinky toe edges of your feet, feel your upper butt drop, upper butt drop down. Big exhale. We're gonna transition to a lunge over to the right side. So you're gonna lift the left heel up, face everything over mostly to the right. Lift your arm, breathe in. Breathe out. And then step forward into a chair pose. So you're gonna bring your back foot forward. Keep your hips back behind you, hands at your heart. Breathe in. Breathe out. And step back to that lunge. Set that left foot back. Inhale, lift your arm. Stay here, exhale. Go back to that squat, that goddess, that Buddha squat. Open it up. You can shift a little bit as you settle in. Once you're settled in, find that breath again. Big inhale, big exhale. Lunge to the other side. So you just shift on that back foot. Keep the front leg bent. You lift your arms up. When you get there, take a breath in and a breath out. And then hands to the heart, lean forward, step forward. Try to settle those hips back and even the feet. Take a breath in, lift your heart. Exhale, sit those hips back. And then step your right foot back. Find that lunge again. Take your time with this. So you might have a full round of breath to find the shape. And when you get there, Breathe in and breathe out and then change the shape. And you might take like a round of breath and some weird shifts until you find that open squat again. Drop your upper butt. Stay there as you breathe in. Stay there as you breathe out. Lunge to the right. Let's take this through. 
You'll make the change with your body. You don't have to go at the same pace when you get into the shape. Breathe in and breathe out. Lean forward, hands at the heart. Take the back foot forward. Little squat, little chair. Breathing in. Feel the hips settling back. Breathe out. Step back to the lunge. The left foot that goes back. Inhale as you lift your arm. Exhale. Sit to the squat. Turn the heels forward. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lunge to the left. So you'll lift that right heel up. Lift the hips. Lift the heart and the arms. Breathing in when you get there. Breathing out. And then leaning forward. As many steps and adjustment as you need to get into chair pose. Feeling the heart open as you inhale. Hips rest back as you exhale. And then the right foot steps back, finding that lunge again. Lifting as you inhale. Feeling your foundation get more solid as you exhale. Coming to the squat, that goddess squat, that open shape, push into the pinky toe edges of your feet. Breathe in, breathe out. One more round, you can go at your own time. We'll lunge and take a full inhale and exhale. And then come forward to chair, leaving your hips behind you. Full inhale and exhale. Back to the lunge, the left foot steps back. Lift your arms, lift your heart. And after you take that exhale, come back to that open squat. Make sure you open your knees as much as your toes, which might mean that your toes come in. Lunging to the last side. Wiggle around on those feet. It's okay if it's not graceful. We're not here to be graceful. We're here to be connected to the experience. And then lean forward, hands at heart. Keep the hips back when you come into that chair pose. Relax your neck. And then take your right foot back, last lunge. Feel this big reach. And then take it into that open shape, that Buddha squat, that goddess squat. Take a breath in. Get the lowest you have yet as you exhale. Straighten the legs, lift it up. And then bring your hands down to your heart. We're gonna find warrior two. So you're gonna turn your right toes all the way to the right, your left toes turn in, bend into your right leg. Peaceful warrior, tilt it up. And don't tilt it back, tilt it up. Can you lift your heart up towards your fingertips? And then can you soften the space in between your arm and your neck, that inside of the shoulder? Inhaling. Exhale, warrior two. Check out the front knee. You want to try to get it over your ankle. It's okay if it's not quite there, but it's definitely pointing the same way as the foot. On your next tail, inhale, reach out. Elbow down, opposite arm up and over. And I'm not in the shoulder. I'm pushing into that elbow. Woo. Push into the back foot. Soften the space between your arm bones and your neck bones. Can you reach your ear bones away from your neck bones? Big breath in, big breath out. One more inhale. We're gonna transition into that wide-legged forward fold. So you're gonna take this down, turn your toes forward, forward fold, relax your ears, bend your knees as much as you need. Wherever tension came in, then I felt tension come in. It's fine, it happens. Let it go when it gets there. Say, ah, yes, this too, but I don't need this right now. And then bring your hands to your hips. Take your time coming up to standing. And then start to shift into warrior two on the other side. So turn your left knee and toe over, your right toes in slightly, arms are out. And once you find this steady space, it's grounding into the earth through your feet. Keep that and find peaceful warrior. 
Peaceful warrior is this opening of the heart, and opening the heart requires courage, it requires strength. It's not just willy-nilly wandering around believing the world is going to be great because we're wearing rose-colored glasses. It's taking the time to be brave and strong enough to be open-hearted in our interactions. One more inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reach forward, keep that front leg strong, and then find side angle here. And this is also an expansive shape. My heart is open, but my low ribs draw in to keep the integrity and power in my core. Relax the outside of the shoulder. Ears out of the shoulders, shoulders out of ears. Breathing in. Breathing out. And then the hands come down. Doesn't have to be gracefully. You could take a different pathway into this wide-legged forward fold, but that's where we're going. Feel the back body relaxing. Give the back body permission to relax. Breathing in. Breathing out. A slight bend in the knees, bring your hands to your hips, lift yourself up. We're gonna bring the legs in closer together. And then we're gonna take two standing balances, one into the other one. So there's a little bit of a shift. You might have to change where your weight is and just change a little bit of your focus. I'm gonna to try to show from the side. I think it'll be a little bit easier to hold on to. Doesn't matter which leg you lift, I'm gonna lift the right one. I'm just gonna take one up. Now lift your inner thighs and get up and forward a little bit because sometimes we come back here and now my spine is doing this and not this. I'm lifting toes, take the opposite hand to your leg. Now settle the top of the thigh bone down towards your bottom foot. But still stay lifted. Open the opposite arm out. Let your collarbones expand. Let your belly fall in so that you don't have to lean back, so you can stay right up on top of your hip. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then you're going to turn forward this lifted ankle. You're going to put it on the opposite knee and then send your hips back. You don't even have to send them back a lot, but can you feel them reaching back as your heart goes forward? I've got hands on my shin here. So I really want to focus on remaining connected and grounded. Be sure that your left hip or your supporting hip doesn't go to that side that it reaches back. Breathing in. Breathing out. Our recovery pose, we're going to go straight there. Take your front leg and cross it over. And whatever leg is behind you, you're going to hold on to that wrist. And then side bend over to the I usually do this facing forward. I hope you can see now that I'm really trying to let my belly rest back and my shoulder come forward. And I'm going to push into the back foot. Good. So we get this full side space. Big exhale. And stand it up. Release your arms, legs, shake out whatever could use some shaking. Go to the other side, I'll turn around because it's weird to not face you. If you want to get up on top of that standing leg, lift the other knee and the toes. Don't let that foot be dead weight. Keep it engaged with you. Opposite hand to the leg. And you're going to open from the collarbone out to those fingertips. This thigh bone is going to want to go out there. Wrap it down there. So then you can lift that inner thigh space. You get this plumb line, this direct path up and down, rooted and growing, even as you twist. Soften those low ribs down. One more breath. And then this lifted ankle is going to go on the opposite knee. We've got this figure four balance. Today I'm choosing to hold on to my thighs or my shin here. Just to make sure I'm very connected, very much in the pelvis. 
very much in where is this pelvis opening? How is my foundation and my baseline doing? The foundation has been ripped out from under us in so many ways. We need to keep finding it. We need to be able to come back to that steady ground. Finish your exhale. And then take your front leg and cross it over as you stand up. You're going to take the same arm as your back leg. Hold that wrist. And then as you side bend, I'm not side bending here. I'm not side bending here. I'm side bending here. Softening in this front face to open up the back and the side space. It's mostly side space, but we cheat ourselves out of the side space if we can't get some back space with it. Some back space. I'm not here. Some back space. Push into the back foot. Breathe in. Stay there as you breathe out. And then take it up. Release your arms. Uncross your legs. Take your hands back behind your back. Back, lift down to your feet, bring them a little bit wider than your hips. Feel your hips leaning forward just a little bit. And then your hands reach back as your heart lifts up. It's small. It's expansive, but it is small. Breathe in. Breathe out, bend your knees, fold from the hips all the way down, relax your head. And then let the shoulders roll back away from your ears. Breathe in. Breathe out. Release your arms. Bring your hands down. Step back into downward facing dog. Table or child's pose is an excellent alternative. If you're able to be in down dog, if you can find that pressing of the whole hand down from the shoulder, releasing your hips down and lift, or your heels down and lifting the hips up. How is this different than other down dogs? Never the same pose twice. Breathe in. Breathe out. And then lower your knees down. Since we started off in pigeon pose, where it may not have been quite as open as before, we're going to come into pigeon and sleep our pigeon this time. So take the right knee forward, your shin comes forward, so it's not parallel to the front of the mat, but I don't have my foot right underneath my knee. My knee faces out. My hips are even. Maybe you take something and put it under one or the other hip so that you're a little bit more steady, and then come down onto your elbows. We began the practice by finding action in the pose of aligning ourselves. And now see where the pose might take you. Notice if you're leaning over to one hip or the other. And much like in our lunging and standing balances, can you find perhaps a little bit more steady alignment by taking that right thigh bone and reaching it towards the back foot? What does that change in your pelvis, inside of the hip sockets themselves? One more round of breath. And then take your hands under your shoulders, lift yourself up. You're gonna sit over on the right hip. I'm just shifting so I'm facing you, but just come to a place where your left leg is out and your right leg is in. And you're gonna lift your toes, soften your low ribs in as you lift the right arm up and over. So I'm probably not mirroring you. It doesn't really matter. Side stretch out, keep those left toes lifted. Breathing in, breathing out, and then lifting up. And then take the hands back, go ahead and shift yourself, and take the left shin forward. Make sure that that foot wiggles in front of your hip, and then slide the right leg back, coming into pigeon. 
relax your left thigh bone down towards your right foot. Try to make sure that your right toes face directly behind you. more rounds of breath. And then start to take yourself up onto your hands. You're going to sit over on your left hip and take your right leg out. Again, I'm shifting more than you need to. Once you get there where you have that right leg out, the left leg bent in, you're going to come over the right leg, leave the left hip down, but take from the left shoulder blade up through the fingertips, out into the side bend. Soften those low ribs in. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Lift yourself up. You're gonna take your hands back behind your body. Come on to both hips and both feet. The knees are up, the feet are about hip width apart. Hands face forward, elbows face back. You can be on fingertips, in which case you're not gonna take your hips up off of the ground. You're just gonna let yourself be in this lifted, stretching, opening, strengthening chest space. If your wrists are down and you're feeling in for it, you might push into the feet, lifting the hips up into altar pose and reach the knees away from your heart your heart up and away from your knees. Try to push down into the whole foot. It's hard. Breathe in. Exhale, rest it down. Bring your hips nice and close to your heels and then come down onto your back. Leave your feet on the floor for a moment. We just used a lot of power in the chest for that altar pose. We're gonna use a lot of the same power in bridge pose. Wiggle your shoulders under your back. Make sure your heels are up nice and close to your hips, hip width apart. And then start wiggling the arms and more as you lift your hips up, maybe you hold hands underneath your back. Push down into your feet. Can you push down into all corners of your feet, the inner and outer edge, the toes and the heels, the ball of the foot? Can you wiggle your shoulders in more? How does that feel to you? If the answer is no, then you just found the answer. We don't always have to get all the answers we want. Breathe in, feel your chest expand. Exhale, release your shoulders, come on down. Walk your feet a little bit wider, let the knees knock against each other. take your arms and reach them up above you. You might hold on to elbows. If that doesn't feel so great, you can bring hands behind your head or arms a little bit wider. You kind of like elbows to give more side body space, but you do you. Leave your feet wider than your hips, but lift your knees up and then take your toes, stretch them up to your shins. Take both of your knees over towards one side. Doesn't matter. Can you reach your knee on that top leg, the more top leg, away from your heart as you reach your elbows away from your heart? That top leg that you're stretching the front of the thigh of, can you lift your hip bone up towards your heart? Stay there, breathe in. Stay there, breathe out. And then take your knees up. Roll them over to the other side and that top leg, your knee is reaching away from your heart. Your elbows are also reaching away from your heart and that top leg, your hip bone is coming up towards your heart. Your shins are, your toes are lifted to your shins. So that is to say your feet are flexed. Keeping the knees in line. Breathe in. Breathe out. 
Lift your knees up. Release your arms down. Let your knees fall against each other. And come into bridge pose one more time. If you have a wheel practice or another back bend you'd rather do, you can do that. And I am going to suggest bridge pose, wiggling your shoulders underneath, feet in line with hips, toes face forward, maybe hold hands under your back. Feel your heart opening up towards the heavens. Opening up those collarbones, strong feet, all four corners, breathe in. Release the shoulders, release the hips, exhale, hips down onto the mat. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Rock a little bit side to side. And then bring yourself up to a seat. You're gonna find that pillow or whatever you were sitting on. And then come up onto it. And then bring your legs out wide. Toes are lifted. And then take the hands forward. And start to find a fold reaching out through your big toes. So lengthening the big toes out. Are you widening in your lower back? Breathing in. Breathing out. One more exhale. Start to walk the hands back. And this time you'll bring the feet in towards each other, leave the knees open. You can have the feet in really close or decide that they work better when they're farther away from you. Sometimes you go in and you say, it mm, feels tight or that like feels restrictive. Find a good spacing, take a couple of, mess up a couple times and find a thing that works and then might shift around a little bit or manually adjust the flash and then come into the fold. An excellent barometer of when we are doing a yoga pose correctly is, can I breathe and do I know what's going on here? Can I at least question and be present in what is going on here. If it hurts, back off. If something's shooting, relax. If it's challenging, decide how much of a challenge you are in it for today. But where most importantly is your breath? What's your intention in being here? And are you following that intention? As you've been here for a bit, what has changed? Is anything more open? Do you want to adjust a bit? Go for it. One more breath. You start to take yourself up. Take your left leg and draw it in a little bit more. Maybe you take your right leg and cross it all the way over or you just lift it up. Either is fine. This is gonna be a little bit softer without as much crossing. And then you're gonna hold onto that 
front thigh. If this knee is not okay, extend that leg. Your right arm will come behind you. And we'll soften both collarbones and the lower ribs into this twist. One more breath in. One more breath out. Start to release the twist. You're gonna switch your legs. So we'll slide the right leg in, take the left leg over or leave it over here. Try to stay rooted mostly evenly in the hip and hold the thigh. Left hand behind you, open the collarbones, drop the ribs, relax your jaw. Breathing in, breathing out. One more round of breath. Release your twist, unwind your legs. And then you're gonna maybe just leave this um, pillow off to your side for a moment. Bring your hips down, your back down, your feet down, your knees open. If you want to take the fingertips outside the thighs just to give some gentle support. You might place your hands on your belly, your heart in your belly, or down at your side. Ask yourself in this space if there's anything else you need to finish off your practice. And if there is an answer to that question, get to that answer. Take care of yourself, listen to yourself. Take that moment to wiggle it out and say, I don't know, how am I feeling? Do I need anything else? It's that process of studyaya, of self-study. It's important. Intuition is sometimes a skill. There's a certain amount that we're born with, but I think you can really develop it with practice. If there's something you need to sort out, go there. If you're about ready for Shavasana, we'll start going there. This uh, pillow that you've left off to your side, you might take that underneath your thigh bones or underneath your knees, because it'll just give a little bit more softness into the pelvic area. Just being super restorative after doing all of the pretty intense work we've done in the hips today. And once you are finding this place where you are ready to rest, just let your collarbones drop open, your palms face up, maybe that little wiggle of shoulder blades inwards, just enough to leave the heart more open and relaxed. Enjoy this very well-deserved rest.
start to come back to your breath. I'm trying to keep this ease, this steadiness, whatever level of it you happen to have found yourself in right now. As we know that the familiarity and the ability to tap back into this piece is something that the quality of our life depends greatly on. And start to roll yourself over to one side, turning inwards in a moment of gratitude for doing this good work for yourself, doing this good work for the quality of your existence. For having the opportunity to practice here together. When you're ready, find your own version of a comfortable seat. Bring your hands together at your heart. Let your heart continue to open, to expand. And we seal our practice, releasing and own together. Big breath in. and light within each of our hearts, the light and the darkness that resides within us. Namaste. Thanks for being here, friends. Miss Jezebel, come say hello. white patch on the back. Yep. She's got a little pink. back there. She's got a little bit of white. She's, yeah. Thanks, Beth. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. Uh, holiday weekend. Thanks for popping out your um, whatever you're able to throw down this week or another time. Of course, you all know it's all good. I appreciate it very much. Know if you have thoughts, comments, suggestions, requests. She's down talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I have one little question. So, mm -hmm. um, when we are in pigeon toes and then down on the elbows, so do we press into the elbows and keep the head up, or is it just like everything relaxing down to that? Because that's what I always ask myself when I'm there. Do we try to have the stable, you know, like years away from the shoulders or do we just like relax down there? I think most of the time it's probably better to just kind of stay somewhere in between where you're just like, like using a little bone stacking to make sure that you're not falling into the joints, but it doesn't even have to, you can settle in. It's just that when we do settle in, we start to create tension in here so that's why i usually try to like talk about removing that because i know that some place that i um create tension if you have the space and you can widen your elbows even more that's also fine too yeah. lots of options does that make sense yeah thank you okay <laughs> i'm like did i make that oh no <laughs> So, I hope you all have great plans for the extra day off. If you have an extra day off, then take off. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Alright, take care, stay cool, stay hydrated, keep being awesome. Bye. You too. Bye bye.